So let's talk about the revenue cycle. Hi, I'm Dominic Jed Magat. The revenue cycle. In its simplest form, the revenue cycle is the direct exchange of goods and services for cash in a single transaction between the buyer and the seller. More complex forms are revenues made on credit. For convenience, the revenue cycle is split into two phases. First is the sales processing subsystem, then the cash receipt system. Sales order procedure has eight steps, namely receiving the order, checking credits, picking goods to be shipped, shipping the goods, billing the customer, updating inventory records, updating the accounts receivable ledger, and posting it to the general ledger. Sales return procedures. When a return is necessary, the buyer requests credit for the unwanted products. Involves reversing previous transactions in the sales order procedures. It has six steps. Preparing the return slip, preparing the credit memo, approving the credit memo, updating the sales journal, updating inventory and AR records, and updating the general ledger. Cash receipts procedures involves receiving and securing the cash, depositing in, in a bank, matching the payment with the customer and adjusting the correct amount and properly accounting for and reconciling the financial details of that transaction. It has five steps, namely opening the mail and preparing the remittance advice, record and depositing the checks, updating the accounts receivable, updating the general ledger, and reconciling cash receipts and deposits. Hi, I'm Maria Sofia Mendoza. Now we have six classes of internal control of DBTs that guide us in designing and evaluating transaction processing controls. They are transaction authorization, segregation of duties, supervision, accounting records, access control, and independent verification. First, we have transaction authorization. The objective of this is to ensure that only valid transactions are processed. This objective applies in three systems such as credit check, return policy, and remittance list. Second, the segregation of duties which ensures that no single individual or department processes a transaction in its entirety. Third is the supervision. By closely supervising employees who perform potentially incompatible functions, a firm can compensate for this exposure. Fourth is through keeping accounting records. These include firm's source documents, journals, and ledgers that form an audit trail that allows independent auditors to trace transactions through various stages of processing. Fifth is having access controls. Access controls prevent and detect unauthorized and illegal access to the firm's assets, and these physical assets at risk in the revenue cycle are inventories and cash. Lastly, the independent verification. Its objective is to verify the accuracy and completeness of tasks that the other functions in the process perform. Let's proceed with the two kinds of physical systems, the manual system and the computer-based systems. A manual system is a bookkeeping system where records are maintained by hand without using a computer system. For the computer-based systems, we can view technological innovation in accounting information system as a continuum with automation at one end and re-engineering at the other. What does automation mean? Automation involves using technology to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of a task. Re-engineering, on the other hand, involves radically rethinking the business process and the workflow. Its objective is to improve operational performance and reduce costs by identifying and eliminating non-value-added tasks. Automation and re-engineering techniques are applied to both sales order processing and cash receipt system. Hi, I'm Andrea Quito Tolentino. Advantages of real-time processing It greatly shortens the cash cycle of the firm. It can give the firm a competitive advantage in the marketplace. It permits the identification of many kinds of error as they occur and greatly improves the efficiency and effectiveness of operations. Finally, it reduces the amount of paper documents in a system. 
Now let's proceed to automated cash receipts and procedures. First, the mailroom clerk separates the checks and the remittance advices and prepares a remittance list. After these, the cash receipts clerk reconciles the checks and the remittance list and prepares the deposit slip. Then, the AR clerk receives and reconciles the remittance advices and remittance list sent by the mailroom clerk, then creates the cash receipts transaction file based on the individual remittance advices before he finally files the remittance advices and the remittance list. Finally, the batch program reconciles the journal voucher with the transaction file of cash receipts and updates the AR subsidiary and the general ledger control accounts. For point of sale systems, these are used extensively in grocery stores, department stores, and other types of retail organizations where only cash, checks, and bank credit card sales are valid. Thus, organization maintains no customer accounts receivable. For daily procedures, this is where the checkout clerk scans the universal product code or the so-called UPC label on the items being purchased with a laser light scanner. The POS system is connected online to the inventory file from which it ret retrieves product price data and displays automatically calculated taxes discounts and a total for the transaction on the clerk's terminal. Control considerations for computer-based system. First, authorization. Management and accountants should be concerned about the correctness of the computer program decision rules and the quality of the data used in this decision. For segregation of duties, for instance, a computer Application may perform such seemingly incompatible tasks such as inventory control. The solution on these lie partly in the quality of the general controls over segregation of duties related to the design, maintenance, and operation of computer programs. Next, access control. In computerized systems, digital accounting records are vulnerable to unauthorized and undetected access. Primarily, at risk are the computer programs that make program decisions, manipulate accounting records, and permit access to assets. Accounting records. Accountants should be skeptical about accepting, on face value, the accuracy of computer-produced hard copy printouts of digital records. PC-based accounting system. The software market offers hundreds of PC-based accounting systems. PC applications are general-purpose systems that serve a wide range of needs. PC accounting systems are popular with smaller firms, which use them to automate and replace manual systems and thus become more efficient and competitive. PC systems have also made inroads with larger companies that have decentralized operations. However, this system may also face control issues as computer-based systems which include segregation of duties, access control, and accounting records.